All right, Quaker fans, I'm here again today for another edition of the Penn Roundup, and I'm here today with one of my favorite defensive coordinators, Coach Toop. Can you introduce yourself, Mike? Mike Toop, you Penn, 92 to 98. So, Coach, how'd you get to Penn, and can you tell me a little bit about the defense you ran when you were there? Okay, so I had worked with Bags at Union in 85 and 86, left and went to Colgate. Um, and then when Bags got involved with the job at Penn, he gave me a call, asked if I'd be interested. Uh, I said, absolutely. And was actually the first uh, person he hired. And, uh, and then we, you know, we were really fortunate to hire a tremendous staff. You know, we got Chuck Priori ran the offense and then defensively, you know, Rick Flanders, uh, phenomenal person, phenomenal coach. And I talked to Bags because, Rick and I had coached at Albany State for two years and, you know, he was just a phenomenal coach and, you know, and then Ray Chuck's brother who um, Fish and I and Chuck had coached at Albany uh, had already been at Penn and then Jim Schaefer who actually coached every game at Union College and at the University of Pennsylvania that Bags ever coached. Schaefer was with Bags every, for every game. So from a defensive perspective, we had a, we had a great staff. Um, you know, I was a coordinator only because Bags knew me and I'd worked for him and I'd been at Colgate and had been at that level. Um, and he didn't know fish otherwise probably would have been the other way around, but, uh, you know, the, the great thing, and we ran a three, four, you know, when, when Bags, Bags and I sat down and talked for quite a bit about what we wanted to run and he wanted to run what we ran at union. And I said, absolutely. Because I'm a three, four guy. I have been my whole career. I just like it better philosophically. And, but I, you know, but I said to, we have to evolve our coverages because at the one double a level, you know, they throw the ball a hell of a lot better and, and a lot more efficiently. And we did. And that was what we did every day from the time we got hired in January till we, till we got the spring ball in April, we, we put a playbook together based on what, bags and run at union so yeah we were really fortunate tell me about some of the kids that played for you and if any of them you remember ah you, you remember all of them. you know i i was very fortunate just retired this past july 30th after 39 years at the collegiate level at seven different places and i you know i went back to my alma mater at the academy where i played and everyone was oh what's the best job the best job i ever had coaching was at penn the the, the one thing i'll never forget was we go undefeated in 93 and at practice one day in preseason 94, Judith Rodden had taken over as the president for, I think it was Sheldon Hackney who was before her. So she comes out to practice and she knew exactly, you know, that we had been undefeated and this and that. And she said, listen, coaches, you worry about coaching this team. Well, I'll worry about the academics with the professors. We know there's conflicts and whatnot. And she said, but I expect to be undefeated again. And the thing that I always told people was the great thing about Penn was that they wanted to be great in every aspect of the institution. Academically, obviously, it speaks for itself, but, but everything. And it's, and it's what a lot of people don't get. Because even today, when you say Ivy League, they think it's a bunch of nerds running around. And I'll tell you right now, we didn't have any nerds in that locker room at Penn. Let's get that. Well, straight. maybe one, but uh, well, but you, yeah, but you you weren't strapping it on, <laughs> so. But yeah, so you know, I I to this day I've been very fortunate to stay in touch with with a number of guys that that I, that I was able to coach at Penn and uh, just tremendous memories. Every every team I've ever coached, Penn was always the was always a measuring stick, always a measuring stick because. You know, and, and Fish and I talk and Cheech and I talk still. And, you know, we were very, very fortunate to be at Penn at that time. When we got there, there was a, there, you know, there was a great, there was a great group of guys in that freshman class from a standpoint of talent and those things. Uh, and we were really fortunate that once we got there, you know, the guys bought in and gave us a chance. And once they did, man, they, players play. You know, to this day, I've always said I've never won a game as a coach. You know, I, I've lost a hell of a lot. Just ask people. 
Uh, and they're right in a number of instances, but players make plays, man. And, and, and those guys could flat out play. They just could flat out play. All right. So uh, you mentioned the streak. And mm -hmm. let me share my screen here. So the streak was over four seasons, uh, seven and three. Harvard, the front 92 until Columbia, 95. Correct. And yeah. so since you, you mentioned the streak, I actually highlighted the dates in each game that you see here. And the ones that are in green and in mm -hmm. bold, those are the shutouts. Um, the ones that are in italic and purple, those were the ones um, mm -hmm. that we kept them under seven. Um, and the ones that are mm -hmm. underlined and in kind of like in a light blue, or um, those were the ones that we kept them under 10. And that 94 team, you just look, there's not much black. It's all colored nope. one way or the other. You know? Yeah. We had dudes. We had dudes. So Th those I, guys, I mean, they love to play. And, and, and so what I thought we could do that would be a little bit of fun is have a Toop and okay. Lally's top five games of the streak. What do you Let's think about go. that? You got Let's that? go. All got right. It. So. We're gonna, you're gonna go first, and your honorable mentioned ones were Yale in '92, Cornell '92, and Harvard. I picked Cornell of '92, and why don't you go first as to why you picked your games, and I'll tell you why I picked mine. Okay. Well, Yale wasn't part of the streak, but Yale for me was the was the game that I just felt the the team was like, hey, we we got a shot. I mean, the, we, we, can, we can be pretty good because I remember vividly going into that game. We were both, I believe, two and one in the league. Yale obviously was an issue. I don't know that they had ever beaten Yale, the, the seniors. I know the seniors had not won at home, homecoming game before then, and that was a homecoming game. And, you know, we, we stunk against uh, Fiedler and Dartmouth in the second half. I Beggs almost fired me on the way home and I couldn't have argued, you know, then we shut out Colgate. Uh, then we beat Fordham in a close one. And then we, we played really tough against William and Mary really tough and lost a real close game by two points. And then when Yale came in, you know, we won a really tough game, 13 to 10. We, we came up really big on defense. We made some really big plays offensively, made some great special teams plays. And I thought that was a game that really kind of put us in motion a little bit. You know, the Cornell game in 92 was a great one because we, I, I remember we were really banged up. Sunday didn't play. Sunday uh, and Forgacus for was, were for both Gackers in the same out. hospital room. I remember Cash running onto the field. His wife was in labor. He took a plane up to – he's running onto the field as we're coming out for the opening kickoff and then – we throw them a 40 yard touchdown pass. We were really banged up on defense. Uh, you know, it was kind of a skeleton crew. And, uh, you know, we won 14 7 and played. We just played our tails off that day. We, we played our tails off. And, and I thought the Harvard game was a really good one, too, the first game of the streak, because we lost to Princeton a week before um, in a tough game where. I think if we had played him again, I think we would have beat him, but we didn't. We had our shot and didn't get it done. But the Harvard game, was again, it was Harvard, you know, the hype schools, Harvard yelled Princeton, which we heard about when we got there. And, and beating Harvard at home after that one in a close game was a big win. And I thought really put us on the, on the uh, springboard into the next season. Yeah, it showed character. Mm -hmm. um, the reason I picked the Cornell game, like I was saying, is I remember that week going to visit um... – Fergakis had the busted arm. Yep. Sunday had the busted foot going and they yep. were like roommates in the hospital. And I went to visit them. Yep. So we're down the two studs. Cash Miller, as you said, I still remember him getting off the plane in Ithaca and ESPN greeting him as he gets off the plane. Then he scores a touchdown, as you said. And I still remember it was just funny. Like you said, the skeleton crew um, sitting at breakfast with Bagnoli that day. And he was going through all the casualties and said, this may be one of the greatest games in Penn history when we win. Yeah. And I just thought that was, you know, that's why that game sticks out to me as yep. being something that even when we're down, we bring it. 
Yep, you know? 100%. All right, let's go to number five. Um, same school, but two different years. You picked Cornell yep. 94, and I picked Cornell 93. Tell me about your choice. Yeah. You know, the 94 game, we're on the road. We had clinched outright the week before. Uh, but I remember we beat we beat Harvard 33 zip the week before at home to clinch. And DeRosa throws a touchdown pass. I think it was like the last play of the first half, basically. And um, busted his thumb or tore all the ligaments. And... Um, so we didn't know. I mean, he had to get his hand taped a certain way so we could take a snap. And first half, we really struggled. I remember first series, or it might have been the second play of the game, Levitt, the, the tailback who wound up playing in the league, he goes like 75 yards for a touchdown. And Jamie Daniels has got the angle on him, and Jamie doesn't catch. So I'm, I, I get him on the sideline, and what a lot of people don't know is – the Wednesday before we left every year, I would have all my seniors on defense over to the house. My wife would cook for them and, you know, she'd make a huge meal and the guys would eat. We'd be there for four or five hours. And we did that. So we get to the bench and I go, Jesus Christmas nine, you can't catch him. He goes, coach, if your wife didn't feed us so much, I would have been able to run faster. So, you know, Jamie, you know, and Jamie who had a speaking problem, didn't stutter a word when he yelled at me that time. Let's get that straight. But, uh, but you know, but but we got down in the hole 14 zip, and uh, like we did the year before against them. And in the second half, you know, Dero throws for 300. I mean, I don't know if they had two first downs in the second half defensively. We we just played. I mean, we were already champs, but just the pride button was so big with these guys. They were going to make sure they they finished the second year. Yeah, I mean, the, the Cornell game I really liked because it was the hundredth playing. It was at the Franklin Field, the last game for some of the seniors in this and that. Um, and I just, you know, remember it for being all those, um, you know, the first championship, the first 10-0. and 0, um, And then afterwards, 100-year hundred year Cornell game and everyone in the uh, the throwback unis up yep. at uh, Smokes afterwards. Mm-hmm. Um, it's still in their pads and everything. Uh-huh. Know? Yep. All right. Let's go to number four. You picked Dartmouth in 94, and I picked Harvard in 93. Right. Why'd you pick- I, I, think, I think the 94 game might have been, I would say, might have been the closest game we had during the streak over that four-year period. Although, you know, the Bucknell game in 95, we kicked a field goal last play. But, you know, they, they had a first and goal on the three-yard line. And, you know, the, the guys just – the guys just nutted up and said, this ain't happening. And, and they just, they just shut them out. They just shut them down. They just flat out shut them down. I mean, and Dartmouth was a damn good team. Yeah. They were really good. Um, and we just, it just defined who this team was. And certainly the guys on defense where they said, this just isn't happening. And they, they just, I mean, I remember Dartmouth's calling timeouts and they're coming over, and I'm not saying anything. I mean, oh, the, the Luke is yelling at Good Willie, and, you know, hold Josh on, is yelling on. at Turner. Did you just and... say Good Willie? Did you just you say Good him. Willie? Hold on, uh-huh. hold on. I've been waiting for this one. Oh, should I do it now or should I wait till the game? Now let's wait. All right, all right, all right. Hold on one second. Let me get this back up then, all right? Give me a second to do this again. Sure. Um, let's get back to that, uh, share screen. All right. We're going to wait on that one, but I got, we got to make sure we get the clips in. All right. Go ahead. Dartmouth. Good right. Willie. Good Willie and DeLuca are yeah, fighting. They, they always got they, along. They, they just, never fought with anybody, right? Not, a, not, not at all. Not at all. Only me. Only me. But yeah, it was, uh, it was just. It just defined, you know, be, be to, there was a couple of games in that streak where that just defined who those kids were on defense. Just the mentality where every guy said, I'm doing my job. They're not going in through me, so you better do yours. And that's that's what it was. And they couldn't get in. Yeah. They took 
they took their shots and couldn't get in. Yeah. I picked the Harvard game because that's the game that broke the curse. Um, we, we hadn't won at Harvard in several mm-hmm. years. Um, it was right after Princeton where you could see the letdown. Um, mm-hmm. We were a little banged up, especially Terrence. Um, yep. And, and we were actually down and, you know, the pride came out and they didn't want to lose. And I still remember Terrence going, you know, what was it like 150 yards on a whack wheel route, you know? Which, yeah. Throwback, it, throwback boot from McGeehan. Yeah. I remember that game. McGeehan, you know, he threw a couple up to Masick who, and Miles, you know, uh, my wife could have thrown to him and he was going to catch it. But <laughs> I remember, you know, Magoo throws one into the end zone and, and he hits and Miles makes a great catch. And, and I just remember McGeehan running off the field and he looks at me and he goes, Cooper, I'm in the zone. And I'm like, if I threw to Miles, I'd be in the zone. But, uh, <laughs> but he was. He was, he was the man. Magoo was the man that day. All right, let's go. Number three, you ready? Yep. Dartmouth, 93. And I picked Fiedler. Cornell ninety four, Fiedler. Yeah, that that was a game, and and I remember the week of that game. Our freshmen were not allowed to play because a cup like Dartmouth was on trimesters, so they had orientation. And I remember to this day the Penn administrators who were at the Ivy League meeting voted in favor of our freshmen not playing. So that was a that was. A, Babs was a little hot that week, as opposed to the rest of us. But but that was a Fiedler game. I mean, they came in after he lit us up the year before. Yeah, we shut him down. And it was the first game picks. of the season. We, you know, the boys showed up, man. I mean, they had a couple of fourth downs, and we stoned them. And, you know, Fiedler threw one touchdown pass, and the rest of the time, you know, the boys got after him. I mean, 5'8", 2'7", 9'7", 9'8", 4'0". Six eight, the boys just eight three. They said, you know, I think we sacked them six or seven times, and uh, you know, and we went off. I remember the opening kickoff of the game. You know, our starting tailback Terrence Stokes flying down the field and making the tackle. Yeah, it's you know, and that's your starting tailback, and that's who that team was. Yeah, I mean, I picked the Cornell game similar to what you did before, mm-hmm. just because. I mean, you know, they were on the streak. The seniors took control of it. They did not want to give it up. There was just a ton of pride in wanting to make yep. sure that they just kept it going and it didn't end on their watch. They wanted that, you know, it just had to be done. And they yep. just took control of that game. Absolutely. All right, let's go to number two. You picked Cornell of 93, um, mm-hmm. which I would had number five. And I picked Princeton of 93. Why'd you pick Cornell? The second half of that Cornell game is probably the best defense that I witnessed in 45 years of coaching. I mean, I still will argue to this day, we sacked them 12 times, not 10. (laughs) I think they had, I think they had, they had 23 yards of total offense in the second half until we kicked the field goal. And then they did drive before we stopped them on fourth down. But, I mean, and even in the first half, you know, they had a pick six. Uh, then we got beat on a third and 23 for a touchdown over the top. So we're down 14 nothing at the half. And, I mean, in the second half, man, they couldn't, they they couldn't piss a drop. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, that was, you know, that was McGinn still. And, you know, the, the offense went off and, uh, you know, Stokesy was banged up a little bit, and I remember uh, Abby and Jay Scott getting reps in big situations in the second half. And, and uh, I mean, Nick's big pick there in the fourth quarter, uh, in the th- late in the third quarter, which, you know, allowed us to tie it up. I mean, but that, that defense that day, I mean, I just I, – between series, I can vividly remember not saying a word. Because, like I, it was like the dark was. I mean, they're yelling at one another. I mean, I remember, and it was, you know, and it was, and it was Chris John. Chris Johnson's yelling, "You guys better get there before me, because I'm sacking." 
So you better get there before uh, I've got the sack unless you can. Be, I mean, it, those guys were just, I mean, they were incensed. I mean, it was as it's the most fun I've ever had. And I, and I've shown that I've shown the highlights from that game. And my first choice for the last, from the time I've left to every defense I coached and, you know, and the kids at the Academy over the last 10 years, they would ask coach, can we watch the Penn Princeton and the Penn, you know, Cornell highlights. And I said, boys, that's how you play defense. That's what defense is. That's, that's, that's the definition in a dictionary. That's defense right there. Yeah. I also remember it was really cold that day. Um, I remember it, it was a hundred year. Like you mentioned, the other thing is after the games, you know, the coaches, we go to backstreet place yeah. um, around the corner by ourselves and, you know, the season was over. I remember Maggie Annis in Berlin and a bunch of the boys walking in in their uniform still. And it's yeah. like seven o'clock and Bags was and Bags was actually still there. And we were like, Bags was like, what are you doing? <laughs> so that was I mean, that was awesome. And they said, coach, we're going to smokes. So I said, I said, boys, you're undefeated. Do what you want. Don't get arrested. But the other thing I remember is it was still <laughs> and they was did. The- the first home game after the Princeton game that year. And there was still like mm-hmm. almost 25, 28,000 people at the game. Oh and there yeah. It was a big Place crowd and it was loud. Place was packed. Yeah. I picked- uh, and I got to tell this story. I got to tell this story because so we beat Princeton and then we, you know, we come back and we clinch the championship against Harvard. So, you know, so we're playing Cornell and the wives would always sit all together up in the, up in the stands. Yeah. So, you know, we're down 14 to nothing to half. And my wife is sitting there with Cheech's wife and Fisher's wife and, you know, cowboy and stuff. And there's these four alums and they're just killing us. These coaches didn't do anything. They won a championship They're You know, they didn't get these kids ready to play. Yada, yada, yada. I mean, they're just bashing us. And my wife, who, you know, Lyles, doesn't say a word to nobody <laughs> at halftime turns around and looks at me. She says, are you Penn alums? And I said, yes, ma'am, why? She goes, well, why don't you go sit on the other side? Because if all you're going to do is bad mouth these coaches and this team, why don't you go sit on the other side? <laughs> and then we came out in the second half and got after it. Kicked her ass. After the game, they tapped her on the shoulder. says, is your son, is your husband the defensive coordinator? She says, yeah. He goes, you did a good job. She goes, oh, gee, thanks. <laughs> yeah. I, I picked the, uh, so, the Princeton game. Um, uh-huh. It, you know, I, my number one is I, you know, I think a little bit better. Well, you might as well throw the number ones up then. Let me, but finish though. But that Princeton game, I just was like the Elias game, you know, Terrence Stokes gets 272. Freaking Elias's longest run was off the field. He only got That's 50 yards. Fastest he ran was after the game because he was afraid he was going to get mugged. So let's do the number ones. And you put Princeton. Yeah. Obviously, favorite game, favorite game in 45 years of coaching. Cornell set Cornell's close, but I mean, just the hype for that game, you know, good morning, America and Elias is on the national TV saying that none of our guys could get into Princeton and run in his mouth and all the hype. And, you know, I mean, he kept having that one hat with his high school. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's who the guy was and that's fine, but, but I'll never forget. You know, I'll never forget Stokesy after the game where we just kicked his butt. And they said, well, you know, and the, the, they're interviewing Stokesy. And he says, well, you know, do you feel sorry? You know, the guy out of his – Stokesy goes, the guy ran his mouth. We we won. I don't feel sorry for him at all. And they thought they were going to come in and kick our butt. But I will tell you to this day, I knew we were going to win the game because during pregame warm-up, I would always come out with the studs, you know, all the linemen and stuff. I wouldn't go out there with all the skill guys. I'd stay inside, and Shafe and I would always come take them out, and we're out. We we get to the tunnel, and this is pregame, and there's probably 20,000 people. All the students are already there, and we're standing at the tunnel, and Elias runs over to our sideline, and he had cut his hair, so he takes his helmet off and he shows his mohawk, and Turner – and Johnson went <laughs> nuts. And they, they just start screaming, and Elias, you're dead. And I just looked at Shafe and I said, we got this one. 
and we did. I mean, I mean, that was the one, you know, to this day, if, if he doesn't slip and fall, good Willie knocks his head off. Oh, should we look at that one now? Hold good on. Willie knocks his head off. Hold the on. I was lucky as hell. Hold on. Let me pull it up here. I mean, that just defined. I mean, that game was fun. The kid ran for 56 yards on what, 17 carries? He was averaging like 190 coming into the game, was a number one rusher in the country. Yep. All right. You ready, coach? There we go. I've seen this a few times. Boom. 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 <laughs> and 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 Pat will tell you the guys up front, let him run and get to him, and boom, he had no shot. All he right. had no shot. I do got another one, and we'll do this other one and let you call this one. Before uh, I tell you why I picked Dartmouth, though, but you may be smarter than me and better than me, and I still like that game. But yep. how about this from Princeton? Fourth and one, power we. I just told Andy, they run power, just shoot the gap. When you see the guard go, follow him, boom, just lit him up. JC, there. They had, he had no chance. He had no chance. He had no chance. One more time. I mean, that was Boom. as good as he got that day. Boom. Oh, Turner. That one. Turner. Johnson. Here's your nose guard chasing down, you know, on his back. Boom. That's 3-7 right there, baby. How's that taste? Yep. All right. Let me get mine why I picked it. Um, I had to go with the Dartmouth game. It was tough for me. I mean, I really liked I, the Princeton I, one. But I the can't Dartmouth argue, one, man. That's the one where we had the fire. Yeah. In the equipment room, like the night when we're going to yep. take off. Uh, I still remember Johnny coming to wake me up in Tea House to come and save whatever we could. Um, I know, remember we... walking in with Shafe at – we walk in. Shafe and I would work out at 5 a.m. every day or a little earlier. And we pull in, and there's freaking fire trucks all over the place. So we park, and we're walking, and everyone says, what are you guys? Said, we coach here. We're going to lock in the works. He goes, we walk in, and everything's burnt down. The helmets were like, heated and switched. You know, to this day, Dartmouth – to this day, Dartmouth will swear that, that we did that on purpose so we could wear blue on blue. Yeah. The, the helmets remember were all, all stretched. Of our white – all of our white uniforms got burned in the fire. So yep. all we had were blues. Yep. And Dartmouth thought it was the whole thing. I mean, I to this day, Tommy Gilmore said, That's be I said, Tommy, we had a freaking fire. <laughs> then we went up to the game and Franny and Johnny actually saw him before the game because you know Tommy was yelling, That's just, this is BS. But dude, we had a fire. Yeah. So but yeah. not only that, we smelled bad. Yeah. Everything smelled well, burnt. Smoke. That's a fact. That's a fact. The locker room before the game was tough. <laughs> that was tough. Um, but you know, and then we had to go drive twelve hours to get yep. there. Yep. And I think we did it in one night, if I remember, or was it No, we nights? left we left that night. We left Thursday night after Chow and went halfway. It was it was tough. It was uh that was a lot to overcome for that game because like you know, like we said, that was a good team. That was a very good team. It was a good team. It was a long road, a lot of adversary. Yep. And then the reason I really like it is the way it ended. Yeah. Yep. So. Yep. It's not this play. The next one begins the goal line stance. There's Pup. They go on a ISO and, yeah, option, excuse me. Yep. And then the other no, way, I and this is uh, Good Willie and DeLuca, I think. Didn't matter which way they went. Go to Pup, go to Magoo, McGarity. You run to Luca, you run to Goodwillie, didn't matter. JC, yeah. Yeah, didn't matter. So I do got one more video I was going to show. I don't know if you remember this one. <laughs> oh, yeah. This was always my favorite, you know, when they would tear down the goalpost. Although I that remember the one crazy. year they missed the uh, the Schuylkill and put it in the um, 
on the express. Well, they way. almost did, but then they got him to they got it down there. But yeah, that was yeah that the the Princeton game was crazy. I rem- um, and I remember uh, I remember a bunch of the fans were banging on Princeton's locker room door, <laughs> yelling, "We want Elias! We want Elias!" And the cops had to get him out of there. <laughs> Yeah, that was. I guess uh, we were rather unsportsmanlike for that. I, I remember there was one game where Jim Finn was standing on top of some Amarosa truck, trying to direct the goal yeah, post. That was Piella. Piella was was staring him. That was '98, and they almost threw the damn goal post on the highway yeah. instead of the scoople. Yeah. So they stopped in just in the nick of time. Otherwise, they would have been ugly. Some so, good times. Yeah. yeah. Who do you still that keep was fun. up with? Who do you still keep and up with? And I remember, with, you know, we they tore him down. They tore him down after the Princeton game. Ah, I hear from a bunch of the guys, you know, just moved down here to Dallas about five weeks ago. I had lunch with Tommy McGarity, who's down here. You know, I've stayed in touch with Nick. Chris came to my last game that I coached. At the academy, we we won a bowl game. They came up for the game, which was awesome. But uh, yeah, I, I hear from a number of the guys, and you know that you, you can't put a price tag on that. That's what it's all about—just the mutual respect, and you know how much you know. And I know I can speak for the other guy how much we love coaching those guys. You know, is just uh, like I said, they were a measuring stick, man. It was a measuring stick. It was going to be tough for anyone to measure up after I left that place. Um. Any other comments? You going to come to any games next year when it's the thirtieth year of that championship team, or no? If if there's a thirtieth, I mean, we might. I, I might. Uh, I wouldn't mind finding my way up there. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. I went. You got to be. I, I've learned you got to be a little careful now. That's um, the fact. Because I went down to see practice like a couple weeks ago this year, um, and I actually mm-hmm. took my camera down, you know, to take some pictures and stuff like that. And um, I don't know. I mean, I guess maybe someone my age walking around a college campus taking pictures raises some red flags because security was all over me. I there you go. Get, I had to get Ray to vouch for me. There you, you know? go. It's a different so, world now, Lyles. Oh, much different. Different much world, different. baby. Much different. Yeah. yeah. Well, I've, been, I've enjoyed this. You got any final comments or anything or any like that? No. You know, they're my guys. They'll be my guys for life. They know that. You know, like I said, you know, and I went to the academy and we set an all-time record last year for wins. But the the Penn guys, they're the guys, man. They're okay, on the top Derek. shelf. I appreciate, appreciate your time. Appreciate it, Lawless. Stay safe, appreciate okay? It. You Hope too. Hope to see you next year. Me too. Appreciate it.